Good afternoon. Hello. Welcome to CQC. I'm Malcolm Bar O'Brien. I'm the Regional Director for the North. There's been a great deal of interest in your appointment as Chief Inspector of Adult Social Care, and it's my pleasure to um, have this opportunity to ask you some questions this afternoon. Well, immediately before um, I came to the Care Quality Commission, I was Chief Executive of the Social Care Institute for Excellence. So I've been working with CQC over the last year and a half um, uh, on our shared kind of uh, purpose around improving services for social care. And um, we were doing that through developing all sorts of resources like films and good practice guides. So, uh, so I encourage people to go and have a look at the Sky website to see what I've been doing. Okay. Uh, and before that, have you um, had, a, had a career in adult social care yourself? I've had a career um, across adult social care and um, uh, the health service. Yep. Uh, so in the past, I have worked at a local level uh, managing um, health services. I was also at the London Borough of Camden in the social services department, uh, running a range of um, uh, so support services there, but also managed the Asylum Seekers Service. Um, I was at NICE for seven years, uh, working on uh, developing standards so another one of our important partners um, at CQC and then I worked at the Appointments Commission uh, which was involved around um, appointing people to uh, boards in the health service and other areas and a lot of work on governance which I think will be really important for the work that we're going to do to assess whether services are well led. I'm setting these out in the signposting document, a fresh start for uh, adult social care regulation and inspection. And um, there are five priorities that I've identified. Um, so first off, we've got to sort out um, what the regulation system is going to look like for adult social care. And uh, you know, how are we going to apply the five key questions that we need to be asking of all services. The second aspect of that is developing the rating system, um, which I think obviously comes out of what we're doing in regulation and inspection, but it's just so important to the sector, so important to people who are using services and their families, that I think it kind of warrants being a priority all by itself. Um, the third area obviously is dependent upon um, the bill being passed and uh, CQC getting the responsibility of financial monitoring of some of the bigger providers and working out how we do that will be a priority. And the final two, um, the first is around supporting staff to deliver um, and actually making sure that um, people can rely upon what it is that we're saying that we're going to do and that we make sure that staff um, can, can do that. And finally, is really about building confidence um, in CQC, making sure that the people who are using services, their families and their carers, providers, commissioners, our other national partners, actually um, you know, work well with us um, and have confidence in what we're doing. I think that what we can do is to use regulation to inspire people to improve um, and do that by celebrating um, the, the good practice when we find it and making it absolutely clear to people what we think is good practice and, uh, and, and sharing that. Um, the second thing I think that we can do is also to, um, uh, in setting the standards and in building those into how we um, make the ratings, we need to be actually signalling to the sector what it is that we're expecting them to do so that they can move up um, um, from good to outstanding and actually see how they can make that journey. Our strategy also um, commits us um, unambiguously to always be on the side of people who use services. As Chief Inspector, what will you be doing to make that tangible and real for people and not just warm words on a strategy document? Definitely doesn't need to be warm words on the strategy document and that's what we've got to um, make sure that we do and that's absolutely one of my key priorities and, and I think I'd try and do that in three particular ways. The first is to make sure that we increase the um, numbers of experts by experience who are involved in our inspections so that they can bring their unique perspective um, and the insight that they can gain by talking to people using services um, and members of staff um, and bring that to bear on the judgments that we make. The second thing is to actually think about how we um, co-produce, co-design um, the system that we're developing um, and putting into place with people who are using services but also with the organisations that represent and speak on their behalf so that actually they, they feel ownership of, of the work that we do. 
And the third area, to kind of really personalise this and sort of take on board the personalisation of adult social care, which we've made great progress in over the years, is to actually, I, I call it the mum's test. So this service, is the service that we're looking, uh, looking at, is it good enough for my mum or any other member of the family um, that's appropriate? And if it's good enough for my mum, that's fantastic. Mm. But if it's not, then we've got to do something about it. One of the aspects of that is going to be the financial monitoring um, uh, uh, responsibility that we'll get um, if uh, the care bill as it's currently uh, drafted is passed. And I think that um, we need to be thinking about this in the context of one of those five questions, which is, is this service well led? Um, because actually, you know, what an overarching organisation does, as well as what happens in the individual locations, is really important. So I think that we need to think about how we do that. We also need to think about um, what information do they already have available because some of these larger um, uh, corporate organisations you know, will have um, good data sets because their head office wants to know these things. And then thirdly, I think we have to think about the relationship management side of things because um, I think that you know, what's really important for CQC is for um, us to be visible um, and for us to develop um, uh, good working relationships at a local level but also think about how we develop those relationships um, at a more senior level as well. The first thing to say is I know them, I like them, and I think I can work with them. So, you know, that's a really good basis um, uh, to start off with. Um, and we're all sat on the 15th floor in the open plan office, so there's lots of opportunities for kind of, you know, um, uh, the, the ad hoc discussions, um, which I think are so important in terms of making sure um, uh, that we, we do work well together. There are more formal opportunities, obviously, um, uh, through the fact that we're all members of the board and got corporate responsibility um, uh, collectively with, um, with David and, and the rest of the board in actually the, the future uh, of the Care Quality Commission. And then I think there's, there's what we do around the themed inspections as well, which is one area, I think, where the three of us collectively with our teams can work together on a particular issue say for example dementia, um, uh, which will have an impact on all of the services that we're responsible for and that that will give us a really good um, focus for making sure that we're working together and thinking about how we support um, person-centred coordinated care. I think that um, we have to balance up a number of things. Um, we have to balance up ha you know, the, the thousands of providers we've got to uh, inspect, um, the importance of making sure that we're focusing our um, effort and attention where it's most required, which frankly are with those providers who um, uh, are either needing to improve or, uh, or just adequate um, and need to be encouraged, encouraging them. Um, but we, so we will focus the uh, frequency of regulations in all likelihood on the ratings. Um, and that is one of the things that we will talk through with uh, people who are using services and providers as to how we do that. Um, but I would imagine that we will end up with a range between two years for maybe for people who are outstanding, um, it may be two years before they get inspected again. But we'll have some triggers in the system, either random inspections just to make sure that people don't think they can coast for two years and forget about it, um, or indeed um, if something happens like, I don't know, a change of owner, um, which again we know has an impact um, uh, on, on, uh, on services, sometimes for the better, but clearly we need to check. Um, so those things may well actually encourage us to do more frequent inspections. Andrea, thanks. Welcome to CQC. Thanks for sharing your initial thoughts with us and we wish you uh, the very best of luck. Thank you very much and I'm really delighted to be here.